All right. So I know Bulls fans are really excited to hear this conversation I'm going to have with Kobe White. And I'm just going to be honest right now. If I had a vote in Most Improved, you would have got my vote, Kobe. I'm just going to throw that out there right now. But how you doing, man? How was your summer? I'm doing good. Uh, my summer was great. Yeah. It was uh, obviously full of you know a lot of basketball stuff, but um, it was good. It was fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As I mentioned, you finishing running up, running up behind Tyrese Maxey for NBA's Most Improved last season. Uh, what was that moment for you where – you understood what you can maximize and do on the court to really step into that role where the Bulls needed you to be that scorer and that closer for them. Uh, I think all of that, a lot of that stuff started this, this their training camp. Okay. Um, my teammates and coaches giving me the the confidence to go out there and do it. Yeah. And then obviously we didn't start off the season like we wanted to last year. Yeah. And then once we kind of got into a rhythm and everybody started getting confident, I think that's when stuff started to change for me. Also, yeah. Um, yeah. just ha- knowing that knowing my teammates supported me all the, along the way, yeah. the fans supported me. Um, I knew last year stepping into that role was going to be a little different, and then obviously my role changed over the course of the season last year. Right. Um, but it was a good learning experience for yeah. me, and, and this year I'm excited to build off of it. And talking about your teammates and speaking of them and just the lessons that you got from them and just being in those positions of getting the advice, I mean, what really stood out to you from maybe conversations that you've had with DeMar? We know that he's no longer with the team, with the Sacramento Kings, but also Zach and, you know, think about Nikola Vucevic and players like that that have certain statuses in the league but look to you to really empower you to say, hey, Coach, we need you to do this. We know you can do this. Mm-hmm. So, what were those conversations like? I mean, they were they were they were honest. I said the one thing honest, is, is especially with with Debo, um, yeah. with Demar, um, him just you know learning from him, you right. know learning what he sees, what he what he doesn't see, how he manipulates games and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Um, it was honest though. Like he, 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 me and him have a good relationship to where like he tells me like. You're you doing good, but right. what you got to work on is this. What you got to you know you got to stay on this. And then obviously, obviously the same with Zach and Vooch. Um, yeah. Just yeah. Zach always been a guy that always kind of believed in me from the beginning, yeah. from, since I was a rookie. Just telling nice. me like how good I was and how good I can be and yeah. stuff like that. Even sometimes when I didn't believe in myself, he was mm-hmm. always a guy that always instilled confidence in me. Yeah. And then Vooch is just like you know obviously that's that's my big. Yeah. Like, right. like you know we obviously we got to communicate nonstop with, right. on the court, off the court, just right. you know where he want the ball at. Yeah. How he want to set screens and stuff like that. Right. So me and him are always in constant communication, and he was one of those guys who, when he first came over from Orlando, mm-hmm. he kind of told me like, you know, you know, some guys don't know how how good you are until to, to they to they're with you and they're right. in, they're in it with you and they're playing with you. And he was a guy that told me like, man, I didn't know. Basically, I didn't know you was as good as you are. Like, mm-hmm. you, you got a chance to be really good. So hearing that from all-stars and guys yeah. of that caliber like that, it, it does wonders for my confidence. Yeah, for sure. It definitely yeah. puts another battery in your back, yeah. right, to really get out there and do it. And so from watching your game this past season, it feels like your, your ball handling mm-hmm. really opened up your game even more. So, I mean, how, how much has that played into the growth of your game and making sure that you're able to make plays downhill and also for your teammates and for yourself to really open up your shot as well? Mm-hmm. It's played a huge part because um, really ball handling, kind of. if you look at all the – all the really, really talented stars in the yeah, league, yeah. they all are able to create off the balance and all have a good handle. So I feel like it opens up a lot for you, yeah. just being able to have the, the ball control and be able to make reads through it. Because if you don't have to really worry about where the ball is going, yeah. you can have your head on the swivel making reads, making seeing what's in front of you. So for me, yeah. it opened up a lot. Not yeah. only, you know, just, you know, off the dribble, um, in the shooting, creating yeah. your own yeah. shot, but also creating for my teammates too as well. Every season, your numbers, your status, <laughs> your role, the expectations go up and up, and especially for this year coming off the season that you had last year. So how do you envision for yourself individually what you want for this upcoming season, and then also from a team aspect as well? I think for me personally, like I'm not the type of dude that looks towards the future. Like Obviously, okay. I, I really want to build on last season, but I like to live in the, in the presence and control what I can control. Yes. And for me, that's just getting better every day. How am I getting better every day mentally? How am I getting better every day physically, spiritually, emotionally? Like that, yeah. that's kind of how I carry myself. So yeah. I, feel, I feel like for me, for myself, for that way, I don't put a lot of pressure on myself. Yeah. If yeah. I just take it day by day then, then, and I'm not looking towards the future, I'm not, I know God got me. So at the end of the day, uh, I just that's kind of how I look at it. No, uh, as a team, yeah. you know, for us, I just I just want to win games. Yeah. Whatever, you know, obviously win is the most important thing. I think we have a really talented team. Yeah. We obviously got younger. We obviously right. got some good guys, you know, obviously getting giddy, mm-hmm. uh, drafting modest, uh, getting so back. So I feel like this year 
we will play a lot more uh, faster pace, getting yeah. up and down. Um, so for us, that's that's what we got to key in on. I think in order for us to be good and have a chance, we got to play fast. I love that you brought up the name Josh Giddy. Obviously, came over in the trade for Alex Caruso. But you talk about this team offensively wanting to get up and down, and that's the style of pace that your head coach Billy Donovan wants you to play. But when you're matched up and you have a six eight point guard running the break and for yourself, that again, as we talked about, you can make plays for yourself with the basketball. But as a shooter too, mm -hmm. it has to feel great to have a guy like Josh. Josh Giddy that can run that point and find you in different areas of the court so you can get your shot off. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, he's so unselfish and he's obviously a pass first guard, but his IQ and his passing, him being able to make reads, mm -hmm. it, it helps. Especially guys like me, I L Zach out, yeah. and then yeah. uh, I think just giving him that confidence. You know, obviously coming to a new situation, um, yeah. but giving him that confidence to be who he is, yeah. um, to yeah. be who you are, and, and 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 you know, with the ball in your hands or without the ball in your hands. Um, yeah. For us, it's exciting for us because, especially like me, I've never, you know, with with the stature I'm at now, mm -hmm. um, just going to be off the ball a little bit more probably. Yeah, yeah. Um, but to have him, knowing that him and Zoe are two pass-first right, guys right. and guys that's really unselfish, yeah. it's going to be exciting for me. All right, let's talk about Lonzo a little bit. Obviously, you talked about getting you brought up Lonzo's name, but just your thoughts on just the journey that he's been on to get back to this point. One, how encouraging is that mm -hmm. for you to see that from him, but then also, two, can, can we expect Lonzo possibly to get back to the Lonzo that we saw in those 30 games where we played with the Bulls where you guys were the best team in the Eastern Conference? Well, first off, I just think it's a blessing for him to be back on the court. Yeah. And for us as a team, me, myself, and my, all the team, to be a part of that journey, yeah. to help him push him each and every day um, to get back to where he was. So it's a blessing for me to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. um, I always said if it's one person that could do it, it would be him mm -hmm. just because of his spirit, yeah. I, yeah. his love for the game. Yeah. Like I always say, he, he's one of the most positive guys I've ever met. Like just always smiling, always happy, always excited. And yeah. you know every single day you're going to get the same Lonzo. Like no mm -hmm. matter where he's at in his in his rehab, no matter where he was at, right. coming back, whatever it may be, he knew he was going to get this. You knew he was going to get the same Zoe. Yeah, um, no. So that's the the one thing that I respected about him that when times got hard, you know, it didn't affect him. Yeah, um, yeah. So for for me, I'm just excited to see him back on the court. You yeah, know, I'm nice, excited nice. for him to. You know, it's going. I'm pretty sure it's going to be very emotional for him yeah. that first game yeah. as soon as he checks in. The fans probably be emotional for them. Yeah. Everybody should get up on their feet because this is not something that happens every day. So, yeah. you know, for us, I think it would be a blessing when he check in that first time. Yeah, well said on that one, man. Just think about this team aspect in the Eastern Conference and having people out there that are not looking at the Chicago Bulls team to have expectations of being one of the better teams in the Eastern Conference. But I know for sure for you guys, you believe that you can be because you talked about just the overall talent that you have, but the depth at the guard position is really important for this group. So how do you envision this team going into this upcoming season with kind of being off the radar for a lot of people? Uh, I think that we, I mean, we, we, we kind of know that, that people are kind of counting us out, but yeah. for us as a team, we want to, we want to stick with each, stick with each other, yeah. believe in ourselves and I'll just take it one day at a time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Obviously we got younger and obviously it's going to be without Debo and AC here, it's going to be, you know, ups and downs yeah. and adversity, but I feel like with us, we, we, we all want to win. I think that's the one thing with our team. We all got one common goal, and that's to win. And I think if you got that, you can get over any hump any, or any hurdle. I definitely understand that. Listen, I was in the United Center that night when Kobe went crazy against the Atlanta Hawks in that play-in game. If I was NBA commissioner, those points, the 40, that counts. So we're, <laughs> we're going to make sure that that counts. In Chicago's books, it definitely counts. Kobe White, we appreciate the time, man. Appreciate Thank you. Thank you, man. Yeah.